This song is called Small Window. Flying over Chicago Bear trees line the white snow Daylight fades and lines of cars flash Across the night in red and gold What a view from my small window On the inside sleeve, Luluk performing live in our Melbourne studios with a song called Small Window. It's from uh, their new album, which came out last year in July, called Passerby. And uh, I'm Alice Keith. I'm in the studio with Steve and Zoe from Luluk. And that song is the opening song on your album and it sets up this beautiful mood and, and this narrative, I guess, that continues throughout the whole album which I'd like to talk about. But first, where did that song start? How did it begin its life? Um, well, the first lyric kind of gives it away. Uh, we were flying over Chicago and, uh, yeah, I was just kind of gazing out the window and we were, I think, um, you know, we'd been travelling for a long time and I guess I was just, it was just a little poem actually, just, a, you know, the first couple of lines of the song and I thought perhaps that's all it would be. And then a little while later I found the note and uh, just started musing on it and, yeah, it kind of became the song that it is. <laughs> How do you work together on the songs? They they often sound quite effortless but it's but even Equally, on the other hand, they're so carefully crafted or, and, and it sounds like there's, there are no accidents in your music. Yeah, well, we work on the writing. Zoe works on the writing and then we work on, like, I'll throw an idea out there that's usually 
nonsense, but you know, I just try and contribute to that process as much as possible. But where I really, um, say so this song's a really good example. It's she had this beautiful melody and beautiful guitar, strum guitar, and then I just tried to see what I could add to it instrumentally. And um, so yeah, I just threw in a few different instrument instrumental ideas, and eventually the song built up to a point where we were pretty happy with the way it was sounding. Mm. But uh, on this record, unlike previous records, we actually then got a producer on board for this one and that took this song and the rest of the album to I guess a level that we imagined but we knew we weren't going to achieve just on our own just on yeah. our own so yeah this one I, I, we got it to that point and then we took it further the, the producer you're referring to of course is Aaron Desner from The National mm-hmm. when I, I was listening to Passerby and I, I was struck by how carefully put together and restrained it was but then compared to Dear Hamlin actually there's so much more going on yeah, yeah, production right. wise and in terms of yeah. creating all of these different I guess spaces for the yeah. songs to live in. Well, part of that is that I think uh, Aaron has recorded a few albums in his garage studio mm. in Brooklyn there <laughs> and it's an s- amazing space that's sort of become an extension of his brain and he's got a really good creative process he was just like we can just press mute. If this idea doesn't work, we'll just press the mute button and then it's gone. You know yeah. what I mean? So we just laid a lot of ideas down and a lot of things. So uh, it was actually surprising how quickly we worked, but at the same time we did record over a period of four or five months yeah. there yeah. And, and we just had both time and then sort of, you know, speedy execution as well. It was and a really great. Yeah, so when we were um, working on the songs with Aaron, actually what we originally did was record just all of my parts. So no, we didn't put any of Steve's harmonies or guitar ideas, anything else, just recorded um, the very bare bones of the songs and we sent them to Aaron to listen to and he was very humble about it. He said, you know, I'll listen and I'll see if I can, you know, um, bring something to it. And then he wrote us an email after we'd sent them to him and he was very excited and he basically explained, you know, what I said before about hearing little different universes Mm. and that they really needed... um, you know, interesting treatment, nothing sort of cliched. And uh, basically he just wrote what we would have written to him. Mm. So we were really like completely blown away. And yeah, and then it, uh, thankfully it was as easy as that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, because I guess working with maybe a less experienced producer, there's there's sometimes that idea of going, oh, let's throw everything we can at it. Mm. Yes. Um, and this next song that you're going to play for us is actually one the first moment on the album where – you hear full instrumentation, yeah, that's which is, right. a, I think, song five on the album. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Tangled Heart. So we'll just Tangled uh, Heart. swap instruments. Yeah. In New York City, trying to find our own feet. Two tangled hearts in the mizzled sand Holding me close as we make out the streets By the window in the afternoon I sit and watch the kids leaving from school Little packs falling down their backs Place on the corner is a work of art Some inviting, some pushing too hard You find some history behind every page I'll always be with you Sit and listen while a man tries to say He has exactly what he thinks I might be Nico fills the walls to the dressing room A foxy tale of wit is nobody's fool he cried, why would you leave? You only just came. It's always the same. Ooh. I took my love around to the world Her lights straight 
It's the night time, but the noise doesn't end. My sheets get twisted as I turn in the bed. I recall a dream you're living again. There's a there's a big sense of place in this album. Mm-hmm. You've spent a lot of time living in different places since you formed. Um, can we go back to actually when you did start as a group mm-hmm. and how you've developed your songwriting and and yourself as a band and the time you've spent overseas? Yeah, I think uh, Steve and I both, without ever really discussing it, had a sort of uh, intuitive desire and. Um, you know, uh, inclination to spend time overseas and especially in New York City. We're both really drawn there. Uh, I went there for the first time many years ago and always had a sense that it was somewhere that I would like to spend time. In fact, I remember being a very young child and someone talking about um, that they studied music in New York City and they lived there half the year and came back to Australia. I remember hearing that as a seven-year-old and I thought, wow, that sounds incredible. (laughs) And that's kind of what we do now. We don't study music, but we make it. Um, uh, Anyway, uh, the... um, we started Luluk in Australia and we made Dear Hamlin in 2007, released it in 2008, and we produced that entirely ourselves. And, f- yeah, very quickly we started getting um, some interest from overseas, some Canadian festivals uh, invited us over to play. And, yeah, so it was a very kind of natural thing to just start spending more and more time over there. And um, it's very uh, helpful as an artist to have distance from your familiar surrounds. It's that kind of capacity to reflect on where you're from and uh, and then to be involved or engaged in new and exciting places um, just helps you yeah, yeah, grow and uh, and definitely artistically and, and particularly as we went to make Passerby, our second record, uh, going back to New York to record it after sort of struggling to do it here um, was very important because I think the flexibility and the creativity creative space that we felt over there um, was really important and integral to the record sounding the way that we wanted it to. So, yeah. In terms of um, putting the record together, uh, there's 
there's a cohesiveness thematically in, in the lyrics at, and there's also a real cohesiveness with the sound. How important is that for you to create something that is an experience from start to finish? I think, I mean, we're like, yeah, we're making albums, you know, we're not making like individual songs, although we want them to have their own sound and their own universe, as, as Zoe said earlier and Aaron said in his initial email to us, everyone should have its own universe that it exists in. But the overall sound, yeah, should be like a complete album. Mm -hmm. And I think the thematically it comes lyrically from Zoe, quarterly, mm -hmm. And then we sort of just build on that to try and make it sound, yeah, t texturally different each song. But then overall, I don't know. We just put a lot of work into it, really. <laughs> yeah, that's you know, the but it's crux yeah. Of well, it. I mean, I'm interested in that. Like how, even though it's instinctive, like how how um, how much thought do you put into, I guess, structuring the the words? Um, in it, they seem to be very straight shooting and direct, but there's a lot of poetry in them as mm. well. Um, yeah. That's a big thing that you do, Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, you spend a lot of time getting those, yes. getting it just right. Yeah. I mean, poor old Zoe, because she had these songs written a long time before. <laughs> oh, not really. <laughs> before we yeah, well, actually completed the record. Mm. You, you're so good at that in the early mm. stages, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we were still working on them as we recorded. There was mm. a couple that still. But, yes, the, um, the lyrics are really important. And I think it's, uh, you know... It's like when ideas are – it's interesting we did a – I did an interview recently where someone said, oh, you know, there's been quite a bit of time between your first and your second record and then they sort of asked me to explain why and I said because we really want to make records that are complete and they finished my sentence by adding the word honest and completely honest, which is not what I said. I said I want them to be complete, uh, which is really interesting. It was nice that they probably thought they were trying to make me sound like I was making more sense. But uh, <laughs> um, but uh, that sense of completion is really important. Um, and I think that if the, you know, all elements of the song ha have got a kind of, um, the it's almost like you can't be broken out of what they're, the space that they're in. If you create the atmosphere and the sort of place and the, um, it's like an, you can sort of invite people into this world and if there's something that's not sitting right within it, then it sort of breaks the reverie or the, you know, the atmosphere. And uh, so I'm just always kind of on the lookout for that um, so that there isn't a sense of like, oh, I can hear what that artist has done there. I can hear what they're thinking there. And that, they're the records that I love, you know, that work in that way for me. Um, mm. So that's kind of, you know, it's a big artistic goal, I guess. Yeah, so you're not snapped out of it at some point. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Steve and Zoe, for coming in and playing for us today. Thanks Pleasure. for having us. Uh, what would you like to finish with? Um, we'll finish with a song called Reverie on Norfolk Street, which we just have to swap instruments for again. On our end, this is Luluk performing live in our Melbourne studios for the Inside Sleeve. <laughs> And glowing on my bedroom wall A staircase out the window Its shadow on the floor Looking at the light and dust Of pretty golden stone I can't help but wonder Do you miss me at all? I can't help but wonder Do you miss me at all? Schoolyard blues and dirty shoes Kicking round the fire City dreams calling out, leave it all behind Some noise above it interrupts my quiet reverie I can't help but wonder, do you ever think of me? Even the 